the new training update just went live in Pokemon Go, and lucky for me, for once there's actually a decently leveled instinct gym near my house. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to explain exactly how this works and try to figure out what the best way is to use this system to gain the most possible prestige with every battle. So let's take a look at this gym. Arcanine, Executor, Executor, Lapras, Arcanine, Arcanine, Dragonite. This Dragonite has 2,937 CP. I just spun a focus up. And when I go to battle it, you can see it gets reduced to 2,787. If we close that, scroll back through the other Pokemon, they don't get reduced. The Dragonite is the only one that's getting reduced. The way it works is that Pokemon in a gym get reduced to your trainer level plus two. So in this gym, this Dragonite is the only Pokemon that's leveled past level 26. So that's why it's the only one that's getting reduced. So if you're a high level player, you most likely won't see any reduction when you're training against friendly gyms. If you're a lower level player, you're gonna see the biggest difference here. And obviously, you can see now that I get to choose six Pokemon when training against this friendly gym. The way the prestige calculation works after the update is very similar to before, but it uses the highest CP of the Pokemon that you choose when calculating how much prestige you gain. So let's just give you an example. With this team, my highest CP Pokemon is 857, my Slowbro. That's less than half of the Arcanine in the gym. So when I train it, I'm going to beat only the Arcanine, we'll run, and we should get a thousand prestige for this. There it is, a thousand prestige. That's max prestige because my highest CP Pokemon was less than half of the Pokemon that I beat. Now we're gonna do it again. I'll use the same Slowbro, 857 CP, but you can see that the CP of all the other Pokemon that I'm choosing is a lot higher. prestige. Now that's because the prestige was calculated based on my highest Pokemon, that 2400 CP Snorlax. This change means there's a little bit more to consider if you want to maximize prestige when training friendly gyms. I'm gonna go through now and try to choose a team that I think will gain the most possible prestige against this gym lineup. I want to try to keep all my Pokemon's CP as low as possible so I can gain the most possible prestige from every Pokemon I defeat. So I'm going to choose the lowest possible CP Pokemon that I know I can win battles with. Since the Dragonite is such an outlier, I'm going to ignore it for this battle. I'm just going to try to beat the first six Pokemon in the gym, since they're all within a pretty reasonable CP range. I could scroll. There it is. So the highest CP Pokemon that I'm going to try to beat is 2249, and the lowest is 1809. All my Pokemon are below 1,000 CP, so I should get close to 1,000 prestige for every Pokemon I beat. I'm expecting to get at least 5,000 if I can pull this off.
I think the lesson there is don't put Lapras in a gym if you want people to train against it. It's almost impossible to beat with anything efficiently for training. I'm going to have to up my max prestige a little bit if I want to take care of that Lapras, so now the calculations are going to be based off my Magneton at 1032. Hopefully I can get through it this time. Whoever put this Lapras in this gym, I hate you. I'm sorry, I don't hate you, but that's really frustrating. One thing I've noticed here is with all your Pokemon having such low CP, you're really susceptible to taking a lot of damage when you're switching. Or if a Pokemon faints, the next Pokemon that comes in, like you saw with my Magneton, it took a ton of damage before it even started attacking. It had less than half of its HP, just because it got unfortunate switches and took damage when it didn't need to. I'm gonna run out of resources trying to efficiently beat this Lapras. The lesson of the day is you can't efficiently beat a Lapras. You can't efficiently beat a Snorlax. It's more or less impossible to beat Lapras or Snorlax with a Pokemon that has half of their CP within the time limit. So what I'm gonna do instead is, well what I was gonna do was add a Pokemon at the bottom since I opened up a spot, but someone took it. So I'm gonna train it up, add a Pokemon at the bottom, and I'll focus on the bottom four and see how quickly I can gain prestige that way. So there, level nine. I'm gonna drop something in the low end, below the Lapras, 2063. So I need to add something below 2063 that I can efficiently train against. I mean, why not make it another Executor? Makes the training efficient. So now the bottom four are Arcanine, and then three Executors in a row. So this should be really easy to train against efficiently. I should actually be able to pull this one off while keeping all my Pokemon under 900 CP, which is going to give me maximum prestige per battle. So I should get 4,000 prestige out of this, barring any lag or, you know, <sighs> missed dodges. There it is, plus 4,000 prestige, and that was relatively quick. Now to compare that to how fast an enemy could lower the prestige in this gym, I'm gonna go at it with my strongest Pokemon just to see how long it takes and see how far I can get. So then I can calculate the difference in prestige that we would be gaining and losing over time. Now I don't have the best team for beating this gym quickly, but this should give us a rough idea of how long it would take an enemy player to take this gym down with their strongest Pokemon.
so there's an open spot here at Gloria's. If anyone's interested in coming to fill it, please don't put a Lapras near the bottom. But let's take these videos back to the lab for analysis. After looking over both video files, I have the final numbers. When training, it took me 3 minutes and 20 seconds to beat the first 4 Pokemon for 4,000 prestige. When battling as a simulated enemy player, it took me 6 minutes and 56 seconds to beat the entire gym roster. And that would lower the gym's prestige by 6,000. That's 500 prestige per Pokemon beaten, plus 1,500 prestige for beating all the Pokemon in the gym. If we break that down to prestige per second, you're gaining 20 prestige per second when training the way that I did, and as an enemy player, you're taking down 14 prestige per second. So you can see that it is actually possible now to train up a gym faster than an enemy player can beat it down. This is going to depend a lot on what's actually in the gym. I think the setup here is a pretty ideal situation where you have a very tight grouping of CP at the low end of the gym, because that tight grouping allows you to train for max prestige against multiple Pokemon. The bigger the variance among your bottom three or four Pokemon in the gym, the less efficient training is going to be. That brings me to the thing that I like the most about this update. Sure, it makes training more fun, it lets you use six Pokemon, and it's going to make it a lot easier for lower level players to participate in gyms, but I think the biggest and most important change is that it adds an element of team strategy to gym building. If you're a team player, and you should be, you're going to want to set up your team's gyms in a way that makes prestiging easier while still making it a little bit more difficult for enemies to battle against the gym. Based on what I experienced today with my unfortunate Lapras incident, my suggestion is to place trainer Pokemon at the bottom of the gym to allow your team to prestige efficiently, and after those Pokemon, you can place big walls like Snorlax and Lapras to slow down the enemy team from attacking. If you set up your gym so that your team can efficiently gain prestige at the bottom end of it, you should always be able to train the gym up faster than an enemy team can knock it down. Now you might think that leaving those trainer Pokemon at the bottom of the gym would make it easier for the enemy team to defeat them, but it's still not going to be as efficient as your team training it up. Remember, I was able to gain 4,000 prestige in 3 minutes and 20 seconds. That's 20 prestige per second. Now looking back at the footage again, when I was simulating an enemy attacking the gym using my strongest Pokemon, I beat those first 4 Pokemon in 2 minutes and 17 seconds. Now as an enemy player, you can beat those first four Pokemon faster because you do get to use stronger Pokemon. But if you run away from the gym at that point, you don't gain the 1500 bonus prestige for beating all the Pokemon in the gym. So that works out to about the same, just under 15 prestige per second as an enemy player beating the first four Pokemon and then running so you don't have to deal with the Lapras. So again, with your gym set up properly, you can always train up the prestige faster than an enemy can knock it down. Now in practice, I think people will probably still just be leaving their strongest Pokemon in the gyms no matter what, but I do like that this new system has taken some steps to encourage team strategy. So if you go out and you find a gym, think about that before you decide which Pokemon to place at the low end of it. And if you go out with a team or a group of people to play, you can definitely take advantage of this strategy. Now, of course, this doesn't matter at all if there's no one there to defend the gym while someone's trying to attack it, but in highly contested areas, it would be smart to try to set your gyms up this way, because any friendly player who's there in the area can then train that gym up whenever they see someone attacking and trying to take it down. But if your gym's out in the middle of nowhere where there's not going to be anyone around whenever someone's there attacking it, I guess you can just keep putting your strongest stuff in it. But again, when you're placing Pokemon in a gym, just keep that team strategy aspect in mind. Now the most obvious criticism of this update is that if gyms are easier to train up, there's gonna be even more level 10 gyms just sitting there. And it's true, it is a problem. There are tons of level 10 gyms everywhere. I mean, this one's not. I'm gonna add something to it real quick. But this Valor gym over here, that's been a level 10 Valor Gym for at least a week now, and around the neighborhood, well you can't see them now, but there are two level 10 Mystic Gyms down the road, and it's like this for a lot of people. In your neighborhood, in your area, there are level 10 Gyms that are just sitting. Making it easier to train them up is only going to make that problem worse. Now the gym system is designed to encourage you to get out and play with a group of people. It's meant to get you to put a team together and go out and take over gyms together. 
that's fine, but it's not working that way. If you're young, it's not that hard to get a group of friends together, but if you live in an area where gyms are spread out, you might not have a car, you might not have a way to get to those gyms with your friends. And if you're an adult playing this game, you know how hard it is to get a group of friends together when everyone has their own work and family obligations. It's hard enough to just make time for your friends, let alone make time to travel around in a big group taking over gyms in Pokemon Go. I could be totally wrong about this, but I would assume that a lot of you play the same way I do. Sometimes alone, sometimes with one other person, occasionally with two, but almost never in a large group. So the lesson here for Niantic is that even though your game is designed to encourage a certain behavior, if you're not seeing that behavior in your players, something needs to change. Either find a better way to encourage team play, or stop trying to encourage it. When you want your game to be played a certain way, but players don't want to play that way, there's a problem. Because in the end, no one's going to be playing the game. Encouraging team play is a noble effort, and I'm all for it. But the system needs to be designed in a way that doesn't punish players for playing individually. Currently, this massive amount of level 10 gyms... Ooh, this is mud. The current infestation of stagnant level 10 gyms discourages individual players, which I would guess make up the majority of your player base. So again, I'm a big fan of the latest training update. I think it's great that it encourages team play, and it does it in a way that doesn't require you to be playing with a team. You can still have team strategy in mind while playing as an individual player. And that, I think, is exactly what needs to happen on the offensive side of things. Find a way to encourage team play without discouraging the individual. Because right now, all these level 10 gyms just aren't worth my resources. So again, I'm a huge fan of the updates to gym training, but I think we need to turn our attention to the offensive side of things. Think about it. School kid, catch 200 normal type Pokemon. I have the gold medal, I get a plus three normal type catch bonus. And then right down here at the bottom of the medal, you can see 747, that's my total. 